<laughs> hey, hey, hey guys, today we're making a buck saw. Let's get on it. Tick, 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 boom. Hey, hey guys, thanks for joining me today. We are gonna go over how to make this into a buck saw. Now, if you don't recall, a few weeks ago I came out here and I made a bow saw. Now, bow saws are alright. But buck saws are where it's at because they're a lot more stable platform and they can take a lot more pressure and they're just all around a better built saw. But there's a caveat to that because it takes a little more time and a little more skill to make them, but they also save a lot more time and labor in the long run. So let me go out there, harvest a uh, nice tree to start this with and I'll meet you right back here. So I went out there, harvested this tree. It is about two inches at its thickest point. And of course, it's uh, probably, that's about uh, five, 10. So I'm only gonna be able to use it up to about here anyways. And I need three lengths from this. So here's what I need. I need three pieces of wood, two uprights, one crossbar. And I want them all to be about the same size as this saw blade it just makes things a lot easier so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from up here where I've got this Y and I'm gonna measure out one length two lengths now that is gonna be my two uprights and I want them to be a little bit thinner now they're still gonna be sturdy don't get me wrong but I want the bottom of the tree because it's thicker to be the crossbar because the way I'm making this uh, I saw this on far north bushcraft and survival with Lonnie on it and I saw it and I'm like that's the way I'm making mine from now on all right so here's the basic concept guys you got your blade down there it gets attached to two uprights you got this cross beam here that is going to act like a pivot point with a windlass that pulls the entire system tight thereby keeping the blade very very taut and you can then saw very easily with it so after we get these cut, the next thing we have to do is make a way that this, the cross beam, will be able to pivot on the uprights. So I'm going to bring you on in here and I'm going to show you the idea. All right, so we want our cross member to be pretty much centered within our uprights. And we don't have tape measures out here, but what we do have is something called the Bushcraft Measuring System. How's that work? I take a piece of rope, measure from one end to the other, and I can tell you that from this end to this end, is exactly that long and that long right there has a middle point so all I have to do is fold that puppy up place it at the end right there is my middle point I know that these two pieces of wood right here are the same so I will just go ahead and mark this one as well So that's my middle point right there. That's my middle point right there. I want this to ride on those center points because what's gonna happen is we're gonna have the upright sitting like this and we're gonna have a piece come in just like this. So this piece right here is gonna be jointed like that right around it. So here's my crossbar and here's my upright. It's going to go together just like this. I'm going to cut out the center here and it is going to fit just like that. So what I have to do now is cut out the notch in the center there that it will fit around what I've cut out here. Remember when you are carving it's not about brute force. It's about finesse. So. You can sit there and try to brute force this wood off, or you can just put your thumb here as a leverage point, put your knife blade where you want it to start cutting, and then just rotate it around. And you're going to take off little chunks, but they're nice and controlled. Especially when you get into something like that where you've got a knot. You got a little knot right there. 
You're just going to take it off little by little by little. Two uprights are carved out. Now we're going to go ahead and carve on our cross member. So we're just going to take a real quick measurement and go, okay, how wide do I need that? We'll take our knife and score where we need to cut. There. And I'll know that I need to take out this middle piece at least down to about an inch into here. So now we have sawn through our cross member. We're going to knock that piece out right here in the center. You get left with that little bit of piece here in the middle. You just gotta work at it a little bit. Be very careful, but you just gotta work at it to get that out of there. Okay, so there's my cross member. There's my upright. The idea is there, but they just aren't sinking up. That's too small, or that's too big. I think we take a little bit off that because it's a heck of a lot easier. We're going to have to thin that out a little bit. I went ahead, thinned that down a little bit, and then I also had to deepen these out just a touch and make them a little loosey-goosey. And the reason was is because it's really hard to get everything to line up exactly perfectly. So when I put it together, let's see if I can stand back here, see how it's even? If it's like that, the saw blade's not going to work in there too well. So you want it to be nice and even between the two ends, that end and this end, because the saw blade has to run in between there. And that's exactly where we're at right now. We gotta go ahead and make the groove for the saw blade to go in. So let's get down here and get on that. I've got this side cut, lay the blade in. We'll run it on over to the other side. Find out where it needs to be cut. And I already scored it right there because I thought I was already recording, but I wasn't. So I've got the mark scored. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a groove just like I cut on this side for the blade. This is one of our uprights. We're gonna go ahead and cut a notch around it that way it secures the 550 cord that we're gonna to use to tension this whole thing with a windlass a little bit better, and then we're gonna put it together. We're ready to go. We're gonna put this thing together at each end of the saw, there are holes. I'm using some keychain things that I have on my keychain. You can use sticks, twigs, uh, pretty much any toggle that will keep this saw blade secured inside the kerf there. Do that there. Hook that onto there. We're going to take our rope and make a windlass.
And now we're ready to go saw. All right, it's a keeper. So let's clean her up a little bit. Let's make it something that's gonna stick around for a while. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. We made one heck of a buck saw. Look at this thing, it's beautiful. It's like it just came right off the front here. So I'm hoping that once it dries out, it doesn't get all crazy on me and I can still use it. It's a little bit out of whack right now, but it's still well within the limits of being able to be used. So we're gonna set it up there, give it a few weeks, wait for it to dry out a little bit, keep an eye on it. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here guys. And I want to say thank you very much for all your support and everything that you do for me and the channel. Before I go, do me a favor. Go over to Instagram. Look up bombproof underscore bushcraft. That's bombproof underscore bushcraft. And uh, go ahead and follow me there. But if you get a chance, go on over to www.bombproofbushcraft.com. And that's where I have all my cool stuff. And uh, more stuff getting added all the time, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you so much again for being here. And until next time, get out of the inside and into the outside. Take care, guys. What do you get when you have two fantastic companies that come together to make fantastic products? Bomb Proof Possum. Have you ever been at camp, walking around the woods, and had no place to sit? So there I was. It was just me against the Yeti, barehanded. Hey, you guys got a place I can sit down around here? Yeah, you can sit on the ground around that rotten log. And I took out my pocket knife. Well, now that problem is solved. Introducing the bombproof possum, seat of your pants. Never be caught without a seat again. Other competitors have tried doing just exactly what we did, but they only gave you one stick. Where does that go? <gasps> right into the woods. Bombproof Possums Technology and Research and Development Department came up with a perfect solution. Why not attach the seat to your pants? But not just any pants, the Bombproof Bushcraft Duct Tape Reinforced Knee Pants. The duct tape knee means these are made for rugged wear. Upside, downside, inside, outside, doesn't matter. The Bombproof Bushcraft duct tape knee pants are the perfect combination for the possum perch seat. And thanks to our patent pending 550 cord attachment system, it comes off for easy cleaning of both the seat and the pants. But wait, there's more. Order now, and we'll give you a free roll of duct tape to replace any time your knees wear out, your pants pockets wear out. This stuff is indispensable. It can be used anywhere in the house, on a boat, in the wilderness, anywhere. It's fantastic. Got holes in your pants? Patch them. Got holes in your knees? Patch them.